Uh. Third time making this video because I'm stupid. Alright. <laughs> Here we go. I turned off my camera and then the camera said, Alright, you, you exit out of me, I'm gonna stop your recording. So, continuing on my story of being a reflective feet teacher and spreading that towards every other teacher. I want to go back to this stuff. I have my four different things on being a reflective teacher. It says worked on, went well, eval, and to do. And basically what that means is worked on is whatever objective that we're doing for the day. Went well is how did anything go? Not just the objectives, but how was I, my to do's, how did those go? How did management go? How did my delivery of the information? Was I clear? Did I mention expectations? Did I get what I was supposed to get done? Any stuff like that. Well, anything that went well. And then my eval is just a nicer way to say what didn't go well. Well, it could be didn't mention clear expectations. Did not. I lost my class. Oh, no, sorry. Oh, no, no, that's fine. Um, I lost my class. I something, something. I kept doing an unconscious habit when I was nervous and the kids found out, blah, 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 that stuff. And then my to-do is, what are you going to do about that? Well, let's say my voice is tired. I'm going to start speaking from my chest or maybe take a lesson on singing so I can have, so I can speak better and louder without losing too much. Anything like that, that would work. Or to-do is just, you could even write a to-do that's just, do mention the expectations at the beginning. Done. Great. And then you would move on from that. It's been two days since my last video, and I have kind of revamped, and I've written a lot more, but I have now at the top, focus. Now focus is, oh, did I say worked on is class objectives? I'm sorry. Focus is class objectives. So if it says up here on focus, the focus of the class is dancing. Uh, that means, what, what, what do I mean by dancing? Stay on beat, moving on tempo, moving appendages harmoniously and differently. Uh, writing, science, math, I didn't really care about those, so I didn't put much in there. And then worked on. Worked on is literally for me. Worked on is what, what did I work on from the last to do? Did I mention expectations clearly at the beginning? Did I uh, speak more clearly? Did I actually say hi to some of my kids? Did I remember their names more? Stuff like that. And then the rest is to do blah, 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 blah. That was for middle school. I think I'm doing pretty good at middle school because that's all I've had pretty much. My non-yelling tactics are great, which I, ex I recommend everyone. You just get as many non-yelling tactics as possible. I'm talking Arby's, we have the meats, or ba da ba 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 I'm loving it, or even the clapping. Or you can even do, clap once if you hear me, clap twice if you can hear me, clap three times if you can hear me, clap twice if you can hear me, clap once if you can hear me, clap twice and a half if you can hear me, clap zero times if you can hear me, clap one and a half times if you can hear me, clap four times if you can hear me, boom, continue on, and right afterwards you're, and then you're ready to go. Right after that. However, here's on to the main thing of this video. What about high schoolers? What are you going to do? These high schoolers are not going to respond to... And then they're going to sit you like... They're going to look at you at your dumb, stupid face and go... Well... And you are going to be so confused, uh, especially if you're doing, can it, uh, as soon as they don't do a thing that you thought they were going to do, you've already lost control. So how do you, what are your tactics to managing your high schoolers? And I, I'm going to say this, high schoolers, I'm going to say, if you're going to raise your voice, sure, if that's how you do it, go for it. But I recommend that Think of managing high schoolers as a long road, but this long road is eventually reaching the, reaching the highway so that you can get all the way to your destination of whatever it is. 
if you were to raise your voice, I think of it as a back road that immediately starts going that way. But in the end, it's only 55 miles per hour, while the highway, even though it goes squiggly swoogly, it'll get you to your destination in the end, in the long run, faster. Or you would travel longer or farther in a in the same amount of time for both. So even though one's wiggly woogly, it'll get you faster. That's kind of how I'm thinking high school management is, because think of it like this. If you had, if you had a new teacher and you were about 18 or 17, you have no idea who this person is. You've had all the way from K to whatever grade in high school, all of these expectations, and you're about done. You're about, you want to meet people at this stage. You want to just know, you want to find your, no, sorry. You already pretty much know who your people are. You want to talk to as many people as you can. You want to stay with your friends. You want to have fun. You want to, even though fun was not cool, it, you still would want to have fun. You want to uh, be engaged. You want to have uh, interesting things happen to you and make you more, um, like put more pronounced and stuff like that. How do I get to know these kids? How do I get to know to manage them if they want all these things and I'm trying to teach freaking science? Well, get this, probably start talking to them in a way that's just respectful. Because if you're not gonna give respect in the sense of, these are almost adults, legally almost adults. If you're not gonna give them respect, they most likely will not give you respect. And by that, I mean, not even just like, you know, a hey, great shirt today. Like that would just throw them off. I give handshakes still. Any handshakes that they leave my class, handshake. See ya. Bye. Go to your next class. That could work. I also just get to know my kids. I found out one of them is going to South Carolina for the entire spring. By the way, spring break starts the day after tomorrow. So today's Thursday, and then Friday is the day before spring break. I don't know what videos I'm gonna do, to be honest, TBH, whatever you say. Uh, anyways, rapport with high schoolers. I got to know them. I, I remembered their names as, as best as I could. I saw them in the hallway. That still works. If you're a middle schooler going to high schooler sub kind of person, meeting them in the hall in the hallway is great yelling their names out just being like how's it going my friend how's it going Je jeff barge l, -L, -L word they love stuff like that even all oh my high schoolers and their nicknames they being individualized in a in a in a mostly uh one like associate one socioeconomic school they love it. There's this one kid I named, his name is Fire Hazard. Oh, he's like, yeah, Fire Hazard, yeah. I'm like, oh my goodness. That's, it's hilarious. Um, let's see. And, I mean, that's a great start there. Getting to know their names, maybe some nicknames, some fun banter, and then immediately just being like, all right, we got to switch back to work working as a team, all that stuff, it's, oh my gosh, it works. Because as soon as I have a kid kind of wrapped around my finger in a way that's just, I know who you are. I know how you work because I talked to you. I didn't just be like, here's that paper. I build, I build rapport with you and now you know who I am and I know who you are. A little thing that kind of helped me with this is, now please don't close the camera because this is as far as I got last time it is called the Johari am I moving oh yes thank god it is called the Johari window model and this is it's got a four block kind of like a window pane and it's split into four where it has um, open area unknown facade and blind spot. So open area, unknown, blind spot, and facade. And basically what it goes by is that open area is something that you and the students know. Or you and the students. They, that you know about yourself. The unknown is what 
neither of the students or you know about yourself. So one that you know everything about, or both information that you and the person that you're talking to knows about you, and then the other one is unknown to either of us about me. So it's only about the self. Uh, we have facade, which is basically the, um, is that I know information about myself, but that information is not known to the audience or kids. So that's facade. So like I'm faking, kind of like faking, I guess, that I only know about it, like putting a smile on. They just don't know I'm putting a smile on, so that's facade. And then we finally have uh, blind spot. And blind spot is something that they know and I don't. An example of blind spot is if I was getting nervous and basically I start doing something that I just unconsciously don't know that I'm doing. It's basically what, uh, what, what, what happens in student teaching, what they call you out on, and you're just like, I did that? That's the blind spot. Um, basically, and I see I'm saying basically, that would be my blind spot, but now that's into open area, good segue, open area is something that we both know about me. I say basically a lot. And basically, the open area is a, w a way that you need to make bigger. And the open area is best and most effective, and especially with high schoolers, uh, more information that you know about each other, about myself, or the other way around, if you know about them, both of you know about uh, their self, then the bigger this open area gets, and the smaller the facade gets, uh, something that they don't know about, that I know about myself. That gets bigger, that gets bigger, that big, get, gets bigger, and the more this gets bigger, theoretically, should be more a better relationship a bigger um a bigger chance of you building relationship and better communication with that person you should look it up it's really awesome it's something that's been used in more suburban areas with more um more african-american children uh, socioeconomic schools like that uh, more urban areas like that and um it is it's just been a way to kind of help teachers understand that sometimes what they're doing is not um, not used to be disruptive. So if you said that some kid is animated, is very animated, some, some people, if not knowing the kid, can think of it as a disruption. While instead, this is just a really moving kind of person who talks with their, their hand. They don't mean for it to be any um, offense to whatever the class is happening and the only way that you would know to do that is if you talk to them and you open that big area uh, the open area if you build that up uh, Johari method j-o-h-a-r-i Johari or Jahari. that window method is awesome and that would be a very great start to building a relationship with high schoolers and building up that rapport and getting more management into your classes also, it, all, it talks about kind of changing the class culturally to what it's representing. So if you're living in maybe Ohio, you would have um, you would have a lot of things about baseball or you would maybe get more things about races and sprint cars and stuff like that and kind of match the culture of the school instead of... I, I also know that some, some schools or I just subbed in a teacher today that had the most amazing classroom. It was filled with like history and it also, it not only did it have history and then like a full armor set on an armor stand, it had Mickey Mouse, it had baseball, it had um, uh, a desk that had one of those big feather thingies that you can like write the constitution stuff on. It's, it is awesome. And stuff like that makes, like I said, High schoolers interested. They make them more engaged. They want to be engaged. They may not know it, but they do. They, they think of them as citizens to the high school. They don't, sometimes it doesn't seem like they're really into the community that the high school is built on or the community of the students with, you know, athletics and um, what is going on with the school and plays and theaters and shows and movies 
and all that stuff, or just the culture of the school, they want to be a part of it. They don't don't make them think that they don't want to be. And then maybe if they don't, maybe talk to them. Maybe see how you can get them involved. But anyways, interested, uh, gets them involved, and also, you know, puts more management in your classroom. Building just, just talking to them, and getting to know them, and implementing that into your lessons, it's going to be awesome. Those high schoolers are going to think you're the coolest person ever because you're like, well, oh, did I mention open area facade? You can also leak a little, oh, sorry, leak a little facade into blind spot to maybe help, I don't know, as like an icebreaker. So facade is like something that I know about myself that they don't. I could be like, hey, so I, I heard you play the Switch. I also play the Switch. And guess what that kid's going to do? <gasps> what? You play this? What do you play? Well, what do you play? Well, I play, and we're building up that open area, and it's getting bigger. I play WWE. Oh, well, I don't like WWE. It's getting bigger. But I play Breath of the Wild, and that I understand that they're... Uh, I now know that they're into, like, WWE and stuff, and it's the open area, and it's getting better communication, building relationship. Johari window. Great. All right, keep learning. Keep going. Keep being reflective. It's making me go back to my prime student teaching. We're not losing. We're not losing our skill because of subbing. It'll get better. Yes. Woo. Why is Kiwi so elongated? She's like a hot dog. Okay, goodbye.